Welcome back folks. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Uh, we are working our way around the Anker, A-N-K-E-R-R-Z. First of these I've ever set laid eyes on and certainly the first I've ever overall taking you guys through it. Just wanting to encourage you if you've got a machine you're not familiar with or maybe you're totally new, you've never done a machine before. Uh, no reason not to try. You just want to go slow and be careful. Uh, this side plate, of course, is um, is here so we can get access to the needle bar and the uh, presser bar area. And this one has two screws instead of just one. Um, machines vary sometime. Always make a note, by the way, when you're taking something apart for the first time, pay attention. Sometimes you can just take photos with your phone or whatever and make a note. Uh, sometimes um, Things like these little screws that hold the plate in, sometimes they're the same size and distance, or excuse me, the same length, but sometimes they're not. Some machines are designed where the length of the screw matters. So pay attention to that, because if you just take the screws off and they're different lengths and you don't remember, it, it'll just save you time and aggravation. So here's the bottom one. How do I remember? Well, it should be okay. I've got it sitting on this uh, old towel here. So I'm gonna put it down. And then when I get this next one up here, put this on, let's see here, put this, this one and hold the plate because <laughs> the plate will go, go uh, falling on your machine and could scratch it if you're not careful. Now, here's the other one. It looks the same, but I'll just make sure that I put this upper screw in the upper slot when I go to put this back. So here we go. Taking the plate off, nothing really to see on the back there. Tiny amount of dust, not, not really anything to speak of. Now, let's take a look at what we have. Um, machine designs vary, but of course we have a presser bar and we have a needle bar. No surprise there. Uh, this piece here, I suspect is here because um, for zigzag, and you'll notice it turns Right now, watch it come back toward us. This pivots to to allow the needle bar to move back and forth. Um, this, the, you know, the way zigzag is is made, it may look awfully simple to those of us today. If those of you who have modern machines with all sorts of digital tricks that they can perform, it's easy. Not you know, sometimes people aren't impressed, but remember, engineering zigzag. Uh, it was done many, many decades ago in industrials, but it took, took a long time for it to get into domestic machines. Um, why, I, why I don't know, but uh, you, you can really appreciate the engineering that went into these. So right now, what am I looking at? I need to get my, where is my, uh, here we go, my lint brush. I have an old lint brush here. These are the ones I really like. It has a stiff bristles on this one side. So I can just, you know, just blue, see what dust I could blow there. If there's a lot of dust, I actually have a small attachment for my wet dry pack. I can vacuum it out. But this one doesn't look all that bad. Um, not seeing anything major or seriously heavy. You'll see some, but um, almost every old machine is going to have some dust in it. Now let's see from this angle, what can we see in here? What can we get out? And again, I'm taking this, I'm very doing, you know, carefully. Don't, don't uh, be rough. You never know what, what uh, particularly with a new machine, you want to go extra slow, be extra careful. If this was a machine that I had restored, you know, many times before, I kind of know, you know, my, I know the, 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 the paths around it because I've, because I've, uh, I've been inside those machines many times, but this one's brand new, right? So I want to be extra careful. Looking over here to see how the, the um, uh, tension discs engage. Notice that the spring here is, is on the right side. Up when We'll get a better view of it when we go back to the front. And it's different, right? So I want to pay extra attention to how am I going to uh, thread this machine. Is this check spring? It could be in exactly where it needs to be. It's unusual. But some of the European machines have unusual features. Um, and this spring looks very healthy. I don't want to move it or dislodge it unless I have to. Um, sometimes springs get moved out of place. 
but um, we'll find out. Uh, this one seems to have its uh, check stop right here. So I suspect it, it is where it needs to be. We're going to find out when I go to thread and actually try to use it. So let's get some light over here, see what we can see. And what do I see when I look in there? I see mechanisms that look very familiar to most machines. You know, you've got, you have to transfer uh, the, <clears throat> the uh, motion energy from the drive shaft to the needle bar. And of course we have this extra piece that's gonna be swiveling or pivoting as we um, get this machine set up to do or, or get ready to be lubricated to do its thing when it goes into zigzag mode. Now, because of this mechanism, it's a little harder to see, not only for you guys, but for me too, but I'm looking, again, for uh, mechanisms that need to move. If you are not sure, keep in mind that, remember, we have oiling points up top, right? that can get to some of these areas that may not be as easy to, to reach from the side here. And, you know, take a flashlight and shine it in there. And again, if you're not sure, you don't have the manual, and the manual often tells you uh, how to um, lubricate the machine. If you're not sure, then touch the hand wheel and move it, and you will see metal moving against metal. All right. Oh, I just realized that it looks like the, uh, the needle fell out of the needle bar. Um, now, if that happens to you, I just realized something to show. The needle just fell out. It was just loose. Nothing wrong with it. But it fell. Where did it fall? It fell right down into my, um, uh, my bobbin and shuttle area. Notice I'm not going to keep moving that wheel because the needle is stuck in there. I don't want to damage the shuttle and I don't want that needle to pop off and cause problems. So when I turn the machine over and I start going into another area, because this taking care of your shuttle and bobbin uh, case area, that's a whole nother area of the machine that we will, we will touch. But I've gotten plenty of lubrication here in the side and um, go ahead and don't even have all that much stuck on my needle bar. This machine is relatively clean to be as old as it is. I can tell that it was well cared for. If you get a machine that was not well cared for, don't let that discourage you because I have uh, I have overhauled machines before that, that look kind of rough, but they were they had plenty of life in them. They weren't worn out from a mechanical standpoint. They were just they needed extra love because they weren't treated all that well. <laughs> When they were uh, when they were used by prior owners, but that doesn't bother me. But again, when I saw, um, I happened to notice the needle move and fall. But if you didn't, if you notice when I go to turn the hand wheel, you can notice it if I move the camera for you. Uh, when I move the hand wheel, I'm getting resistance. It's stopping. When that happens, don't force it. You never want to force anything, as, as I've mentioned many times before. There's a reason the machine is talking to you. It's saying. Don't keep turning that wheel. There's something amiss, but it's nothing we can't fix, and we will when we get down into the bobbin area. So there you go. Uh, that's the side area, and I think we are done with the lubrication of that part of the machine's mechanism. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We will keep making our way around and uh, getting the machine the lubrication it's been waiting for. It's part of a normal maintenance. Appreciate you all watching, and uh, we will eventually get through the overhaul of the Anker and at some point get to see how she runs. Thanks for watching.